So if you ride a race gravel, uh, you're going to hear a lot of people talking about tire pressure, a lot of obsession about tire pressure, multiple uh, calculators online, the Zip and the Silka calculator to calculate an optimal tire pressure. Um, these are all interesting, but um, you have, you're riding a specific terrain, you're a specific rider with a specific bike and a specific tire and a specific wheel. Um, there's a whole host of variables that a simple model can't really uh, factor in. So there's no substitute for doing your own testing, if possible. So I did my own testing, both on some smooth gravel that would kind of dominate the typical gravel race, and also on kind of single track, rougher gravel. So your typical race is going to have mostly smooth with some sections of rough. So I, I compare basically tire pressure versus speed and uh, it's got some very interesting conclusions for you. So listen on or skip ahead if you're impatient. Okay, so here's my screen. This is the Silka Pro Tire Pressure Calculator. Um, I'm gonna go here and populate it. So my total system weight, I'm gonna call it 250 pounds. So I'm about 215 pounds. We'll call the bike plus the gear another 35. Maybe that's being, I could probably go lower, but surface condition. I'm going to call it category two gravel, which is well-behaved gravel, the majority of a, of a typical gravel ride. Tire width, in my case, I've got uh, 35s on there, 700C wheels, high performance um, Schwalbe G1 RS race tires. Average speed, we're going to call it moderate group ride. Weight distribution is a gravel bike. Okay, so calculate. And... Basically, Silka says I should be running plus or minus about 50 PSI. Okay, so why am I doing this? Um, Silka tells us probably pretty accurately what our optimal tire pressure should be on a given type of gravel. But the problem is uh, a race isn't going to be all that type of gravel. You might have a, a race that's 80% uh, Category 2 gravel with some sections of category three, category four, you know, rough technical stuff uh, where you'll actually, it'll be less comfortable over that section and, and maybe even a handling liability if you're running too high of a pressure through there. So the, the goal of this test is to see how much I can push the envelope lower PSI. So if I could, if it said, if Silka says I should be doing 50, but I can do 35 and only lose say 1% speed, on um, the bulk of the course, then maybe it's worth it to do that. But say that I'm running at 15 or 20 PSI and it's 5% slower. Well, that's even if it handles better on the rough stuff. So my plan is to ride a route. Here it is on Strava. Um, I'll just trace it out on Strava. This is the Highline Canal Trail near my house. And we'll go here. This is about 1.25 miles. And I'll do this forward and in reverse. I will uh, start each time from a stop. And if you look at Silka's calculator, this is, this is what's called, um, I think, class two gravel, which is fairly, you know, fairly smooth, but a little, little, bit, a little bit rocky. Um, I'll do another test. So there's some single track that's next to the Highline Canal Trail, and it is um, class three. So it's a little bit, a little bit bumpy. Some bigger ruts, rocks, just a, just a something you would want a lower tire pressure on. So that is point, yeah, point six miles. Also pretty flat. So I'm going to go forward and backward on that as well. Again, um, starting from a stop at. 20, 30, 40, and 50 PSI. So the bike camera shows you the smooth gravel. It's nice and the road surface is quite smooth, but there is a, a bit of gravel on top of it. So I wouldn't call it hard pan, but still it's a very uh, fast surface and you can ride a road bike on this uh, very easily. <laughs> um, I did, basically you'll see in the background, base, there'll be uh, a back and forth playing at 10X speed. And um, I went back and forth on the, you know, about three miles total. So a mile and a half in one direction, a mile and a half in the other direction. 
hoping to balance out any wind differences. And I did that at 20 PSI, 30 PSI, 40 PSI, and 50 PSI. So you can see in the graph here that we've got two data points for each um, fire pressure. And you can see a pretty clear trend. Certainly the 20 PSI, which felt certainly felt slow on the road. It, it was slow, quite a bit slower. But interestingly, the uh, and, and yes, uh, 30 PSI is slower than 50 PSI, but not by much. There's definitely some diminishing returns here, and uh, you know you're not going to be you're not going to have to suffer that big of a penalty if you're running at 35, 40 PSI versus 50. I see now that I should have um, run the experiment out to 60 or 70 PSI, but you know I don't have. It already took me an hour and a half to do these tests. Okay, so now on to the single track. You can see a plane in the background here. Um, <clears throat> it's um, a fairly flowy surface, not a lot of rocks and roots. There are some rocks and some bumps. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't get a clean run, uh, a, a lot of clean runs. There was always a person in there or people or bikes or anyway, a uh, bit of a mess. Would have been, I would have preferred a more remote uh, path, but we got what we have. So if you look at the graph, um, very interesting very interesting data here, and it kind of goes against, it, it makes sense in theory, um, kind of goes against what we see on the smooth surface. The fastest runs were always at 20 PSI, and I felt more confident at 20 PSI. Um, I could roll over rocks, you could feel the tire sort of rolling over the rock, basically. Um, <clears throat> 50 PSI was the slowest. So there's definitely a penalty to um, having too high of a tire pressure on these kind of rutted rough routes, you, you, your ability to handle the bike drops and, you're, and the bike basically uh, leaps in the air when you go run over a rock. So if I had to pick an optimal, um, I wouldn't run 20 because it's it's slow on the road, but something like 35 looks like a pretty good pressure um, for, this, for the single track. You get most of the advantage of the, of the 20 PSI, uh, but you're still fast on the road. I, I find it useful to kind of overlay the two curves of uh, speed versus PSI for the rough gravel in purple and, and the uh, smooth gravel in green. So obviously, if your race was all smooth gravel, you would choose a pretty high tire pressure. You would go as high as you possibly could um, and st where you're still going to gain speed. And if your race was all rough gravel, like a mountain bike race, you would choose a really low tire pressure at 20. But if your race is something like um, mostly smooth gravel with a bit of rough gravel, I think the philosophy you want to follow is, is go as far, as low of a pressure as you can where you don't lose appreciable speed on the smooth gravel. Here's the arrow. I would say, you know, somewhere around, you know, 35 to 40 PSI, somewhere where it, it, um, you're still getting most of the speed of the, uh, on the smooth gravel but you, you gain some bike handling ability and ability to run over rocks from on the, on the rough stuff. So anyway, I hope that uh, was useful. Obviously these tests usually, um, tests basically make more questions than they answer. And I, I got some in my own mind and, and maybe I'll do another video, but if you have, if you have thoughts, leave them in the comments and uh, definitely hit the like. Um, it's not to stroke my ego. It's more to tell YouTube that you like the content. So it shows you more of that stuff in your feed and it helps, um, connect other, other users, other, you know, viewers with my videos. So thanks.